Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about how I believe the zodiac sign Cancer can manipulate you, and uh, it does apply and pertain to the Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up. Well, uh, Cancer may simply uh, manipulate others by the expression of perhaps sorrow or despondency, uh, they may very outwardly wallow in self-pity and uh, feel sorry for themselves um, in front of somebody and uh, try to get a sympathetic ear from others because of this. Now, sometimes they may be enlarged or distorted stories just to get others to feel uh, to be sympathetic toward them and to help them out, whether they really need the assistance or, or really don't. Now. This could be uh, the way cancer uh, may manipulate, and whether it's uh, something of a monetary nature or perhaps getting a better resonance for themselves or what have you. They could say something like, well, you, would, you could do this to me after all I did for you, or how could you, why would you think of even denying me after all I've done for you? They could use a story like that to try to get others to do something for them. Now, and they also might uh, attempt to make you feel guilty, play the guilt trip. Uh, uh, they may say something like, well, look at what you're doing to me. I, I'm, you're adding insult to abject misery. I'm going through, uh, I'm, I'm going through a certain plight right now. I'm in a certain predicament and you're just making things, uh, worse uh kind of like adding um a foreign substance to the intake manifold of a vehicle uh when the car's already running bad they'll just to say you're exacerbating things or what have you and you know funny thing is uh they might say this is the gratitude i received so you get the idea now there's uh and also they might use family reasons as a reason to maybe not you know, pay up or, or compensate you. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, they might, well, there was one example when I had a cancer rising friend many years ago, and he had me come over to his house uh, one time and I rake some leaves and for him. And I mean, I rake those leaves relentlessly for a very good part of that day, really not taking much of a break. And uh, I asked him, you know, what was going on and why I didn't receive my funds after a certain amount of time. And he said something like, well, we treated you like family. Now, I think this was just a cop out in order for uh, him to extricate himself from financial uh, responsibility. Now, he did give me a place to stay on that night, if I remember right. But the thing about it is you still don't um, renege on, on something you say you're going to do for someone. Now, the thing about it is, Cancer also, I mean, they could be like, um, they might use maybe a, a mood situation, so to speak, as a reason to rationalize not to do something for somebody. And, and whether in many, they, sometimes that might actually be true and other times it may not be true. And they, uh, they may just do it because they just don't feel like doing it. And they just try to get you to think, well, I'm just in a bad mood. Just leave me alone please and get you to feel for them and then you're like well i don't want to bother this person he or she's in a bad mood uh cancer of course could be known to be very vacillating temperamental and fickle and uh many people can be very aware and cognizant of of this that no uh can a cancer sun moon or ascendant and of course as i stay before they could say something like i'm not in the mood i don't feel like doing it uh you know i'm feeling depressed or melancholy or what have you and again, that could be the cop out to get others to think they're in a gloomy state, excuse me, and think that they that may have been an actual valid reason for them not to do what was requested of them. Now, another thing about it is uh, cancer, of course, could be very, I mean, outward in terms of their emotional expression. They often have very uninhibited emotional expression and they're not ones to hold back their tears uh, many of you um have um i'm sure have heard of a uh, legendary iconic nba player michael jordan who many of you may know has a cancer ascendant and i mean he's obviously not uh, afraid to show 
uh, to show his emotions in, in front of uh, others. His is very, I would say, very uninhibited, I mean, emotional, unrestrained emotional expression. And that, and that could be a vast understatement, especially for cancer rising people, because, of course, those, those are the qualities readily expressed and expressed very blatantly and outwardly. Anyway, well, the thing about it is uh, a cancer may cry in front of somebody as a means to get maybe that person to feel sorry for him or her or to get what he or she wants. It might be a, a ploy just to get you to feel sympathetic toward that person, to empathize and give you more incentive to do what he or she wants. Now, Cancer sometimes, in order to extricate themselves from doing something for somebody, they may twist things around and say, uh, I mean, they, they're often brooding about things in the past and lamenting over past wrongs that were done to them. Cancer may often bring up past hurts as a means to not maybe be there for that person, to get them perhaps out of doing something. They'll say, they'll play that reversal twister, they'll say, or maybe that, uh, you know, you did such and such to me and they'll bring something up that might have been a year or two ago or maybe even longer. And they'll say, well, you did that to me. So why, uh, why should I help? I mean, I have a prominent family member that has uh, 29 degrees cancer ascendant and she would just uh, one day, she just started uh, bringing up things from the past like you weren't there for me and this and that and just using basically I felt whatever reason to just to not be there for me using the past as an excuse to uh, dictate what she may or, or in this case maybe what she wasn't going to do for me as far as the present goes. Now another thing is they may often they might somehow manipulate an argument or some or something into where you're the bad guy or girl when the reality is they might just be more vengeful and grudge holding that they're willing they're willing to acknowledge um they might get upset or irate over something that was very uh, insignificant trite or trivial but they might magnify and, and distort and make you feel like it was something more serious than it actually was uh and, and get you to feel hurtful because of that now Another thing, too, is I think cancer can often be, if they're going to do anything, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, manipulation in, in a crime, it could be home-related, uh, such as selling property to someone that uh, they don't actually own. And, of course, I'm talking about cancer in a very uh, negative manifestation, of course, very isolated examples. They are also, I mean... They are also uh, something when, when I think of cancer, again, getting you to feel sorry for them is that it could be just a ploy. And, and also that lamenting over things of the past, again, is very strong uh, with cancer. And the thing about them is what I would what I want to say is that they um, can really they uh, cancer in a very, very negative manifestation could also be very jealous if somebody is has a better family situation than them and they are just so miserable and unhappy with them, you might see a very negative cancer, maybe perhaps cause dissension for other families that they may simply be jealous of. Now also uh, the house where Scorpio falls in in a solar natal chart can be very significant as this could be the area or sector in life where uh, one uh, can be most proficient uh, in the art of manipulation. Now, Scorpio is the zodiac sign that is often, um, I mean, not often, uh, I say that is, a, not, not often, just always, I'd say, associated with this. Scorpio often falls on the fifth house cusp in a solar or natal chart for cancer. Now, now the score of this manipulation can be very prominent then for cancer with uh, matters with children and uh, lovers. Now, Scorpio may, re I'm sorry, cancer may readily manipulate children, perhaps by reminding them things that are connected with the life giving. I mean, cancer, of course, is the zodiac sign associated with life giving. If it's a cancer mother, 
uh, uh, females, you may say, well, you know, I gave birth to you. You're so indignant. Well, why, why are you acting like this? If it's a father, you might be like, well, you know, I did. I am um, very strongly responsible. I played a vital role in your birth and, and it, you know, what have you. And uh, why why would you even think or, or think of possibly doing this to me? So hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that. I'm back. Anyway, now another thing um, I thought was um, interesting. There was one time where um, they'll also use sometimes their children uh, as a means for manipulation. I'll give you an example. Uh, one time, uh, a cancer rising woman that was prominent in my life um, threatened her parents one time and said uh you wouldn't you won't see your grandchild again if you don't do such and such so they often again could use their children in terms of, a, of that vehicle for their manipulation tactics now the thing about it is um and also cancer at a very negative manifestation giving that scorpio is on the fifth house cusp and scorpio can be a very highly sex sign Sometimes cancer can resort to promiscuous behavior and maybe to perhaps tell each lover that they are, you know, they are the ones for them and play their game, uh, play their game with them. Uh, the thing about it is uh, they also might use uh, sex as a means to, to perhaps it's, there's this manipulation with their lovers. They could say, I uh, think uh, withholding sex perhaps if you don't do such and such for me. So those are some ways I think that Scorpio, given the fact it often falls on the fifth house cusp in a solar natal chart for cancer, how this could manifest. Now also, um, you know, another thing too I thought was interesting is that this um, person I told you about, the down, um, with the cancer, the woman with the cancer ascendant that was a you know prominent family member. She's uh, in in my life. She uh, she had threatened um, to tell the uh, you know I was actually that you know I am referring of course in, uh, to my mother. She um, she had threatened to tell the um, storekeepers not to sell me any more Coca Cola as a form of maybe uh, manipulating me, I think, into not drinking any, um, and, and into not purchasing any more, I think especially caffeine-related uh, um, soda products, beverages. You know, I don't think she ever actually did that, but I think it's a good example of that Scorpio on the fifth house cusp. And um, I guess because she felt that the Coca-Cola was giving me too much energy and whatever it was, and maybe not sleeping as much or what have you. But anyway, um, the thing is too, uh, what I want to get at next is it's also important uh, to look at the house cusp uh, Pisces falls on in a solar natal chart is this could be the area or sector in life where one uh, may have the greatest uh, propensity to be uh, duplicitous and uh, deceptive and be proficient at that as well. Now, uh, in a solar or natal chart for cancer, uh, the zodiac uh, sign Pisces often falls on ninth house cusp. Well, I think one way this could manifest is that um, you may have some uh, cancer uh, people maybe they could use uh, maybe their religion to dissipate into thin air this person too i mean the the, the cancer uh, ascendant uh, lady had said to me you know one time you know that you know are you are you sure you're saved and perhaps maybe contemplating you know as far as being a christian or not using that perhaps as a reason to stay connected with me as a family member or not. And, and what I'm saying is 
with Pisces being on the cusp uh, of her ninth house in her chart, this could be a, a means to, you know, using some spiritual reasons as a, um, you know, as a, or I, I'm sorry, I should say some religious reasons connected with deception. In other words, saying, or she may, might have uh, been contemplating, well, you're not, you know, you're, you're not, you know, this, you know, that religious, and I'll use that as an escape tactic as a reason to um, as a reason to detach myself from you so you could see how there could be you know deception perhaps being used in connection uh, with religion using that as a means to maybe dissipate into thin air figuratively speaking uh, so to speak uh, there also may be though another way this could manifest too is I think well, the thing about cancer is that they often wind up situations in life where they could be somewhat dependent and what ha what I think can happen is with cancer they could um they can maybe capitalize on you know maybe others maybe knowing about their situation and maybe even wind up distorting you know their 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 situation uh, to a point where for example they could go to uh, say, for example, uh, you know, some religious congregation and say that they're in a, you know, a, a lower, um, you know, they're in their lower stature in life or what have you. And say that they're, you know, they're, they're really, um, they're in a less fortunate situation. They might even say, you know, they're oppressed or they're very impoverished, which might be a distortion just to get the just to get the religious uh, people someone in that congregation to help them when they might not even really need that much assistance and just to, as a means to get free items and well and think about it now I mean Pisces being on the cusp of the ninth house of religion can show perhaps deceptive and duplicitous behavior in matters connected uh, with religion and the thing about it is uh, to uh and, and that's really how i think that could actually manifest and for whatever reasons as well remember that the um that the ninth house is also connected with in-laws and grandchildren so for whatever reason though this is where uh cancer uh people might show their uh perhaps deceptive and duplicitous uh qualities uh for whatever reason maybe the thing you know grandchildren can be easy because they could be very young and naive and cancer would not have had to put forth much effort perhaps to uh to do so and because they also and it's not even so much manipulating in a negative fashion it could be too that cancer is really a sign that doesn't want to hurt others generally speaking they're generally not malicious people they're very sympathetic and they may uh, choose to articulate things or say things in a way where it's not hurtful or maybe not want to say something derogatory to a grandchild especially if the grandchild is at a very young age in order to to uh, prevent that person uh, person's feelings from being hurt so that's where you might have some of that that deception qualities come into play and um, so those are ways so that is perhaps why and i think that is one way that that might manifest as well as far as pisces often falling on the ninth house cusp in a solar or natal chart uh for cancer so anyway people um that will conclude this youtube astrological segment um for my take on how i believe the zodiac sign cancer can manipulate you and stay tuned next time where I'll be talking about how I believe the zodiac sign Leo can manipulate you. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one until next time people stay well